Recorded in their mother's basement, Super Nerdland brings you Graded Point Five. Where at a comic book, it would be worth less than the poly bag it comes in. Hey, everybody, welcome to Graded Point Five. I'm your host, Jason. With me tonight is the entire fucking gang. We got Dick, we got Wayne, we got Daryl, and we got Evan. We crammed them yep. all in here at once. Yeah, it's like a fucking clown car in here. I was gonna say it's kind of Dick. Hey. Domo, Domo, er, okay. Arigato, you know what? Mr. Roboto. Yeah, can we? It's do not take even two? enough bandwidth for us all. <laughs> oh, is that better? Yes, Did we need good. to take Son of a fucking intro? bitch. <laughs> we want to do the take two on the intro, or are we no. going with that? <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> oh God, damn! All well, right. No, we won't. Nope, we, won't. we record this for this particular reason, and we still don't care enough to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> we we are the very living embodiment of laziness. We, I, mean, I think it. Me... I think it adds a charm to the show. What charm, motherfucker? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think he's right because somebody yeah, yeah. the other day in the uh, Discord asked, uh, "So what does the graded point five mean?" And of course, you know, explain what you know the grading scale for comics are, and how you know point five. You know, when it's point five, it's like you know, basically almost trash. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah we're water what... damaged, and all the ink is sunburned I th- off. I think <laughs> that's what. Hey. And I think that's exactly why Jason and I, you know, uh, collaborated on that that name because we yeah. realize we recognize our shittiness, we embrace our <laughs> shittiness, and we and inflict like, our shittiness I have, on you. <laughs> I have had listener feedback that sometimes some of the off the cuff shit we do when things like this happen, yeah, are actually funny. All right. Well, I certainly hope so because <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, because we sure can't be funny. Yeah, because we <laughs> fuck up all the goddamn time. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, this episode is episode seven of our Hellboy arc, and uh, where we will talk about wrestling for thirty minutes and then actually talk about the issue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it is uh, Hellboy Weird Tales. Hey, 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 man! You told me you had the thing. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Stop <laughs> interrupting that, me. That was what you were talking about. We do no. that every week. <laughs> no. Okay, go for it. Go for it. So yeah, we're we'll doing fi- Hellboy we'll fix it in post. Weird. Weird, weird tales. Uh, if you like what we're doing or have anything to say, please go on to Twitter at Grade Point Five. Just spell it out and tell us how awful we are and oh, how yeah. we don't give a shit about anything about editing. Yeah, we because can't. we don't. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and and you can tell us how wrong we are. We know it, but we always appreciate hearing it from you guys. <laughs> Yeah, because some people like to read Superman True Brit and all the stuff that we shit on, right? <laughs> Somebody had to Dude, like that it. Superman True Brit is one of our top ten ep- most listened episodes. So what you're saying is we got to listen to stuff that we're going to shit on, and people will like it. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, we're going to start reading just exclusively Archie. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, no. And, I, can't and wait to be, I can't wait to read the uh, Archie meets the Punisher. That's going to be great. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what about Archie uh, meets the Predator? <laughs> Archie meets Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one actually sounds pretty good. Archie gets diagnosed with fucking venereal diseases. Afterlife with is. Archie is pretty badass. When I that hear. actually is a fucking excellent book. It is. It's you know like you know how Riverdale's kind of its thing is that it subverts Archie and kind of yeah. like takes it in a dark direction. The Afterlife with Archie does that in a far more I think natural organic manner, and it's also not a fucking teen drama. Yeah, if y'all are wondering, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah. <laughs> our, 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 our esteemed host is getting baked at the moment. <laughs> right. Yeah. Kidding? <laughs> His okay. fucking Twitter handle, gentlemen, is Hippie Likes Weed. <laughs> right. What, for, what, what is it? How many sheets to the wind is this motherfucker now? I mean, I don't uh, think there are enough sheets on a pirate ship. Let's, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> There isn't enough. Sh- yeah, I can't think of anything. See, this is the kind of comedy we bring to you, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, but no. Um, and people wh- like this we? shit to the tune of like two hundred listens a week. That is fucking awesome. But you do know that that's me hitting the fucking play button, <laughs> you know, two hundred times, right? There was just like I like so unravels. much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want it in my veins. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're gonna kill me. 
My master plan has finally been unveiled. <laughs> Man, oh, I can't get enough of those comic assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good to say. All right. That we're opening <laughs> up our format a little bit, Evan. Yeah. Because we're mostly night creatures around here, so now it's just like, we'll finish recording when we finish, because I didn't even bother taking down the time we started recording. started about seven or eight minutes ago. Dude, I'm not going to look at the clock. (laughs) Okay, we got fucking (laughs) Spaceman Jason over here. (laughs) We're about to get so off topic, it's going to hurt. Hey, now. I, I just thought we got a lot of material to cover, and us being the fucking rambling jackasses we are, getting that done on top of uh, fucking tangents and shit, it's gonna take us a little while, so... No, we got this <laughs> shit. We got this shit. Alright, so we check don't. it. How, we're gonna di- approach this a little differently, because yeah. Weird Tales is a bunch of, like, four to five stories per issue at eight issues. So, like, 40-ish fucking various stories of Hellboy at different points in time done by different uh, creators artists writers etc going through vastly all those... different styles yeah. vastly different styles both in the writing and the art we cannot like we cannot elaborate on this enough but yeah so instead what we're going to do is poke at where it impacts the greater Hellboy lore Cause there's, I think there's villains, a lot of stuff yeah. to poke at here. Yeah. Like, like my favorite stuff to poke at is is obviously going to be these action comic style Lobster Johnson strips. Yeah. Where he's fighting red hooded Nazis and rescuing men in drag and you know doing all the, the shit that you're supposed to do when you're a 1940s hero. As you in that or 1920s hero, 1930s hero, in that classic art style, the paper print look and everything. But yeah, lots to lots to talk about besides just that, though. Yeah. Did you guys have a favorite favorite I'm one not- of the styles at least? No, I didn't read any of it. Oh, dude, I have to say, all of the fucking art in this was amazing. It was yeah. so cool seeing all the different fucking takes on Hellboy and, uh, um, <clears throat> oh, I can't think of his name right now, the homunculus, I am so terrible. Roger. Roger, yeah, yeah. Roger and, um, Abe. And then mm-hmm. I love also how all of the Lobster Johnson, um, comics are in that, uh, sort of Bronze Era style. That mm-hmm. was just fucking awesome. Oh my god. That shit was just like, every time that would pop up, I'm like, oh, I'm in for a treat now, you know? I definitely have to say that the Lobster Jobs Johnson wins for not only just, uh, you know, that sort of nostalgia Bronze Era sort of thing, but also I think it was probably the most solid set of, uh, stories in this sort of story collection, in my opinion. Yeah. I gotta agree, yeah. though, the, the, the art styles on display, man, and some of the pinups in particular are fucking amazing and shit. You know, mm-hmm. um, it was just cool. I don't think there was any single art style, even the more exaggerated, cartoony ones that were drawn for comedic effect and shit. And some of those stories, I I don't think there was a single one, including those, that really fell flat for me. You know, no, it was just all it was eye candy as much as it was, you know, interesting reading. No, there was one story that I really liked. I think, Evan, you'll agree with me why. Because yeah. it's a Kate, Kate Corrigan story. Uh, the one the one that was drawn in, like, a more whimsical indie style? Yeah, and her, or, and her mom comes back. Yeah, it was, what, in the second issue? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was the second or third issue. That one was really fun. Yeah. At the same time, it, you know... Also shows that she's a badass. Yeah, and that while being completely quote unquote normal, she still deals with all the paranormal shit, same as you know the paranormal characters do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, in that one, in that particular one, she gets a, a doily, bleeds on it, and it summons her, the ghost of her mother or grandmother. Her mother. Her mother, yeah, makes it out, makes her uh, into a child. 
And then she gets rid of the ghost by telling her she'll marry a doctor and have a bunch of kids. And I think that that's... Oh, and then, yeah, Johan's saying I'm a doctor. Yeah, I can see why you'd like this one. It's got, like, Kate and Johan. Yeah. Got all those that's all those buttons. I feel that it needs to push. Her. I feel bad for her every month, you know, when Aunt Flo comes to visit, summoning ghosts and shit. Not good. The, don't let me talk anymore, please. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, uh, you know. And of course, I there's you... a a a, re- a really good, you know, little Hellboy story. Yeah. yeah, right after that one. Yeah, yeah, little something about little Hellboy and hats is like one of my favorite things. Favorite things out there. They get hooked on the little horns, and they don't fit on his head. It's so, it's so cute. Uh. Yeah, Hellboy like, wears a little hat. <laughs> I, I went through all these for the story, and I never really took the time to stop and look at them for their art styles. Oh. Yeah, that was, like, the one oh. thing that I was keying in on mostly, is I was like, man, Hellboy would be really fun as, like, an open universe that had multiple artists playing in it more often. Like, Batman gets to be that sort of open universe where... You know, you got a whole bunch of different artists working on Batman stories all at once, and you got Batman stories about him being a kid, and you got Batman stories about, you know, that are gritty and dark, and Batman stories that star Adam West. Yeah. And I want that with the Hellboy universe. Where I've got cheesy, campy Hellboy stories, and then also, also badass Hellboy. That's pretty much with this uh, this series. That's that's pretty much the like all of the emotions that I got with this series. Mm-hmm. Is I want to see, yeah, I want to see like dudes who are at Marble try Hellboy. I want to see like Christian Ward's take on Hellboy. I don't want to no. see Bendis's take on Hellboy. Now this J. H. Williams the third one, that's in issue five. Yeah, the 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 first one, I love the art in that too. Oh, the the pencil one. Yeah, where it's like the humans look very soft, but Hellboy looks very jagged and hard edged. Mm-hmm. Kind of a contrast between the. Uh... You know the regular people in Hellboy, who's hellish kind of. He's got angles that, shit. yeah. He's got angles that don't exist in human physiology. Right. That's pretty rad. I'm, I'm currently looking at this one where uh, Hellboy's pretty much got a fucking cone head, but it actually works in this art style. You know, like. Yeah. It's again, it's angular. Everybody else is kind of regular. Might have some crazy hair to ooze and shit, but. You know, generally, you know, they look normal, and Hellboy stands out all the more for his angular appearance and shit. It's it's an interesting kind of contrast in art style and shit. I, I dig it. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you got this Jim Starlin one, which I love Starlin's work, but he made Hellboy look a little too much like Thanos. The r- right hand of Doom is in proportion to the rest of Hellboy. It's not, you know comically gigantic like it's supposed to be. Yeah. It looks more like Hellboy is a hard-edged Marvel anti-hero. And I I kind of like that. It, it it's bugs like a the fun, shit out of me. It's a yeah. fun I think it's a fun little little take. Like we've got got all these other other Hellboy takes. Why not like Hellboy as a Marvel hero? Yeah, and I guess it is kind of interesting when approaching it from that uh, aspect or that respect, rather. But looking at him, you know, yeah, it is kind of jarring, you know. And and the th- hard thing is that they don't address is it's fifty fifty on what's actually in continuity with this shit. Right, right. The way I the way I sort of treat it is the same way that like. 
the Hellboy universe treats Lobster Johnson as a character. Where there's like a whole bunch of myths and rumors about him, but you don't know which ones are true and which ones aren't. I feel like these are like the stories. Like tall of tales. Hellboy. Yeah, tall tales of, of Hellboy. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's like gotta be some truth to them, but I don't think that they're they're canon, so to speak. Yeah, it's kind of like if you were to ask um, Roger or uh, Kate or somebody from the BRPD, hey, uh, you got any stories about Hellboy? They'd sit down and be like, okay, this one time. You know what I mean? That's this what it feels like. Band, yeah. yeah, or like a low, lower level uh, BBRD employee is like out getting drinks and spilling the beans to, to you, the villain. Yeah, this one time, Hellboy fought off like... <laughs> 20 fucking Japanese ghost heads, dude. It was sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that one actually happened, though. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> yeah. No, but that one actually happened. That one I know yeah, for yeah. sure is canon, but, like, you know, all the other ones. Yeah, I heard he fought yeah. off uh, the director's mom once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, you know what? I, I like that take. That's actually really... You know, that's why really some. That's why sometimes we. That's why sometimes we get like cutesy kid-like Hellboy. That's why sometimes we get like Marvel hero fighting a giant basilisk Hellboy. Yeah, different different conceptions. Now, uh, I, uh, another idea, another conception of this whole universe that I really liked actually was in uh, the sixth issue, the one that was done by mm-hmm. uh, the uh, drawn by Gene Colan. It's a, me, the, the Liz story in that issue. Let me drag that one up. Um, the, the the Liz story was like the second or third one, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, with all the fucking like eighties yeah. sketch yeah. style. Oh, dude, that's pre eighties. That's seventies. Seventies. That, that's okay. like the old Vault of Horror and shit, dude. Okay, yeah, that's making more sense. I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm thinking like Swamp that, Thing. Yeah, in a little uh, bit of that House of Mystery, you know that. Yeah, kind of yeah, the House of Mystery stuff. Yeah. Immediately followed by the like sort of cartoon, the cartoon style. With a with a hint of classical in this one, where Hellboy gets swallowed by a giant beast, which yeah. is swallowed by another giant beast. <laughs> Beastception, <laughs> and an amazing pinup right after too. Yeah, looking through this stuff, and yeah, uh, these things are lacking. Um, Hellboy falling through things. Yeah. yeah, there's a distinct lack of falling through a floor. Yeah, very upsetting. <laughs> oh, there, there is a panel with a busted through some glass. <laughs> Does that? That's not the same thing. It yeah. doesn't scratch the same itch, dude. Yeah, yeah. he's got to be. He's got to be put through like some kind of stone or concrete or you know. <laughs> even yeah, falling even through falling. the stage, that would have been fine too. Well, how about? Oh yeah, that's that's. Well, well, they do make up for it. There are giant monkeys. That is yeah, true. Well, that's do they have guns? Yeah, so and then who gives a fuck? Oh, I mean to do, okay. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, Hellboy gets shot out of a gastrointestinal tract in this this one yeah. issue. So what you're saying is he got he 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 got shot out of some something's ass. Uh yeah, the floor right. let out on the thing. Alright. Oh Jesus Christ. So he fell through the uh the uh the rectum? He fell he fell through the floor of the critter, yes. Yeah, okay. So that, count? that counts. It's more of a water slide than it is falling through something. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. <laughs> we're at world's smelliest water slide. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm zipping through this all. I'm in the last issue and he has not fallen through a single floor. <laughs> Wait, he's had yeah. boxes knocked over onto him. That's not the same thing. Yeah, uh, you know. He falls through a giant pane of glass in the first issue, or first uh, comic in issue eight. I mean, it's, it's close. It's well, with like I, an I, intact I picture it. of Jesus's face. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. 
<laughs> Fighting a giant rat thing with a comically large hand. Oh, this time with uh, this time on in watercolor instead of standard comic or like painting. I'd give it to him. This was one of the issues that really stood out to me. The this first this first comic in issue eight with the art by Jill Thompson, and it's all just. Yeah, it's all watercolor. All looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, that is. Doesn't really care for it. Oh, good. I like the uh, person who did the letters, too. I th- I'm going to assume it's the same artist. But the letters, like, really great indie comic style. I would, I would read this Hellboy, like, Hellboy and Girl Detective in universe right. series. No. Conversely, the one that got me was the last one besides the Lobster Johnson epilogue. The uh, Professional Help, the one done by Evan Dorkin, the Roger story. Oh, yeah. I, I should love, have ID'd ID that as Dorkin right away. I love Dorkin's style with this. It, it just feels so good. Like, I'd love to see him do, like, a Roger miniseries. His style works so well for the character. With Roger being like a fish out of water. Yeah. And <laughs> Dorkin, you know, drawing a bunch of ugly characters. <laughs> yeah. I like it. And then, of course, like, do like a, you know, the mandatory milk and cheese reference in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Some gross out humor, and then. This one's know, even got some, some nice gross out yeah. humor. And some monsters, you know, that's all you really need. And this hits all those notes. Yeah, that's that's true. Got some really good monsters and some really good gross out in here. With dudes getting their heads sliced off by by metalhead Vikings. Yeah. And dudes getting drowned in baby vomit, so Acidic baby vomit. Yeah, I would read that. And then at the end you got that fucking boss looking monster that Roger completely just takes out. Yeah. Let's see? Yeah, I, I mean, would love is, that. This is prime Evan Dorkin right here, man. I feel almost like honored to have this moment with you, Evan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, <a> kiss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about it. You guys going to go back, back into the alley behind the 7-Eleven and touch dicks? <laughs> Probably. Uh, I, I hate Where? to go wrestling, but suddenly I understand gold lovers. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I just want to know where you guys are registered so I can uh, get you a you know, fucking nice wedding gift. Criminal Records um, comic shop. <laughs> <laughs> In Dragon Dildo Emporium. So that's more for Evan. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so this this got me thinking right here. Uh, ig- ignoring all of that other stuff about me being gay. Uh, <laughs> no, you he have just to be gay to like a good dragon how... dildo. Yeah, I just want to like ask you guys what books. you guys would. I want to ask you guys which who you would have draw a Hellboy series, and which character you would you would have them focus on, but. Yeah, I guess I can answer the dragon dick question too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I let's see, shit. Just for I don't know, n- nostalgia's sake, I'd like to see Ron Lim's take on Hellboy and just pretty much everything, you know, Hellboy. You know, I mean, he he's very s- kind of stylized artist and everything, and sometimes. I mean, he he was good enough to follow in. Um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Jesus, George George Perez's fucking um, footsteps on the Infinity uh, stuff, Infinity Gauntlet stuff back in the day, and his you know style is very complimentary to that. But it is kind of an acquired taste, I think. But you know, I, I I'd still like to see his take on it because of the memories I have of his work on Infinity. And didn't Gauntlet he have a, a Green Lantern run? That I'm not entirely sure of. I know he did a uh, Silver Surfer for a while. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and uh, 
X Men twenty ninety nine. Yeah, and uh, uh, I can't remember that series that he did. Um, oh God, um, it. I think it. I wanted to say X Mutants, but I don't think that's it. Uh oh. Yeah, that's actually it. <laughs> that's oh it. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember the video game. Yeah, how was that? It's all right. Yeah. That was that. That was that. <laughs> right. And that was I kind have no of, strong feelings one way or another. It was just kind of bland. Right. And that's kind of my take on the comic too. Um, you know, he was on the art, and the art was. That was kind of back when he was tr- still finding his style, so it was yeah, really weird. It was like some strange mash of like uh, Alan Davis and uh, fucking um, uh, John Byrne, you know, really yeah. kind of strange mishmash. But um, you know, he definitely honed the craft, uh, you know, uh, as he went. But you know, uh, it was it was a decent book. It wasn't anything hugely hugely special. But, no. Um, but yeah, I'd just like to see you know, uh, just see what he does with Hellboy, you know? Yeah, dude, that'd be uh, awesome. Yeah. Now, Evan, I want to change my answer just oh, a little Joe, bit. No, I got one more answer. addendum. I got yeah, one more up? addendum, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe Matarira, too. Yeah, Either one of I would two. love that. Yeah. Uh, now, it's still Evan Dorkin. Okay. Yep. And it's still got Roger. Okay. Throw in Johan, make a buddy cop. Okay, <laughs> I would love that. Both of them as fish out of water. Okay, we got two fish out of water. Who's the bad cop? It's not a bad. Oh, good it's cop, not. A, it's cop. not. A, it's yeah. not a good cop, bad cop, buddy cop. No. Dynamic. Got it. We're it's more deviate like the kind from the classics. Yeah, it's more like where they actually get along and they're both in over their heads. Oh, okay. So a little bit more Pineapple Express with gross out humor. Okay, I I I dig that. Okay, are you ready for this, guys? I I may yeah. blow some minds here, and I'm, I think yeah, that I think that Jason's gonna agree with me on this. Derek Robertson doing a Lobster Johnson uh, one-off that uh, stars Hellboy as a side character. Huh. Dude, 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 dude. Also, uh, fucking, uh, oh god, I just, I had his name in my head and then it slipped me. The Madman guy, Mike Alred. Right? That guy. Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. I would love a Mike Alred. Lobster like, Johnson? I, see, I wasn't even thinking Lobster Johnson. I was thinking, like, you could take. I, I would want him to take, like, the BPRD rookie guy. And like, yeah. give me a tour of B- like, let BPRD Rook oh. be exposed to all of the craziness in the world. Yeah. Okay, Dick. All you That'd had be to, a great fit. You did. You did. You approached that the wrong way, dude. Oh. You, you didn't need to say Derek Robertson. You needed to say the Transmet guy. Uh, yeah. Okay, the Transmet <laughs> guy. Der- but Derek W. Robertson. He's fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah, if yeah. you just said that, I've been like fucking a. <laughs> but yeah, no, him doing a Lobster Johnson with uh, Hellboy as a side character, so but, that way it's still tangentially related to Hellboy, but, but it's yeah, mostly it about Lobster Johnson. Um, I probably would have Derek write it with Warren Ellis, honestly. Well, he's also done work with like Garth Ennis, yeah. um, Peter David. Back when Peter David was good. I just think that Warren Ellis would be able to approach uh, Lobster Johnson in a very interesting sort of way. I just I, th- I feel like he'd be able to go down into a really nitty gritty sort of story with Lobster Johnson. You know, it's not all glory. It's not all Ron's era, you know, comics or anything like that. You know, there's obviously a very dark side to Lobster Johnson that we haven't seen yet. And I don't know if you see that in uh, his actual comic, but, you know, you don't. it's it's it's. It's uh, it's not bronze. It's more like, yeah, it's your shadow. It's, it's pretty much a knockoff of the shadow, and like the green hornet. Because I mean, like you know, he's had to do some fucked up shit. You know that he doesn't like to think about it either. And I think it'd be interesting to see one of those darker tales told by Warren Ellis or somebody else mm-hmm. who's really good at writing dark stories like that. Like I'm open to suggestions. It's just no, I feel no. Like I think Warren that's Ellis perfect. Would do, oh. would do a very good job. We get to see all the stuff that happens off screen. Exactly. In the other comics. Exactly. Yeah. 
Evan. I like that. Yeah. Have we ever had Hellboy done by Frank Miller? That is a good question. No, but but gritty 1980s uh, economic no. collapse. No. no. <laughs> Hellboy <laughs> would be no, fun. Dude, dude, I'm thinking 1980s daredevil fucking born again Hellboy. Born again? Like Yeah. Okay. Like you know the the, the dare, daredevil storyline I'm talking about? No, I don't. I where was he's, assuming he's that taken, you meant he would be a Christian. No, no, like, uh, <laughs> where he's taking on the hand and shit. No, I'll have to check that one out. That was, that was the one where Electra got, like, killed by, uh... Yeah. Oh, but okay, dude, then I've like read a little of that arc. Here's Hellboy versus Miller, Hellboy. Ninjas, done by Frank Miller. Oh, yeah, oh, we do got that Miller one Hellboy. image of yeah, Frank yeah. Miller Hellboy from the first, uh, first collection. Yeah. Badass shit. That'd be really you, good. You know what I just realized, man? This is ki- this kind of uh, uh, fits as a backdoor pilot for our next project, in a way. Yeah. In a, uh, in a small way. I mean, we're gonna we're definitely gonna expand on the. You know, since, this, since but, this is gonna be coming out around the same time. Might as well go into that. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, no, that's a way, dude. And then we can circle back to actually discussing some of these stories. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Wayne, this is your baby, man. Pitch it. Well, look, I want to answer the question first, but oh yeah, yeah, that. yeah I want to answer the question too. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, uh, I actually have a couple, like a couple or three. <laughs> yeah, go for it, man. Um, my first thought. Okay, my first one has to have a, a very specific caveat. Okay. Uh, yeah. The first one is very specific. Lanil Yu, but with a really good inker. Oh, that, okay. that caveat, though. Yeah, because Lanil Yu is a good artist, but if he has a bad inker, that art looks like shit. And that's yeah, really sad, because he's actually a pretty good artist. But if he has a good inker who can follow his style, it's amazing. By the way, lads, <laughs> ball number four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I can see that. And that would be um if as far as like a character goes. Now, um, hold on a sec. Who's writing it? I'm not really getting into writing. That's not, you know, it, I wasn't really Hellboy, the, the writing's not like I hate to say it, but the writing is not the most important part. I mean, how, how, yeah, yeah, okay, we're going to write him falling through a floor. I'm mean, it's not like a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's more story. It's more about the story than it is about the writing. Yeah, but right. as far as uh, you know, that you know, that was um I, I could see him doing like an Abe story. Okay. I think that's I think that style would fit real well really cuz he's he's kind of if you ever seen his style, it's really a flowy style, so I think like a water <laughs> type story would be really good. Or that. Okay. I can yeah, dig that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, and then what was the what were the other ones? One of the other ones I had was um, Ethan Ethan Van Siver. I think he okay. would be. A, I think he would just be good at overall, like you know, just overall. Because he's just yeah. I think you really could pick anything that yeah. was done in a more traditional comic style, and Ethan Van would do it. You well. know what? I would specifically give him a BPRD. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Um. My third choice, and y'all are, you, yeah, I, I don't know if you'll remember the name or not, but Rags Morales. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You ever read yeah. Identity Crisis? And yeah. I think he would uh, be a good, um... I don't know. I mean, you know, he could kind of go, because he does capes and shit real good, so I would say... Yeah. Uh, it's it's really hard to put him on, but I would like to see him do it, is what I'm saying, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um... And then finally, mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw it out there, Alex Ross. Alex yeah. Ross? Yeah. What I, he's there? done Hellboy stuff, hasn't he? He's done stuff, but we're talking about a run. So okay. Yeah, he's done, like, like commissions and... Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, portraits. I'm, I'm looking at some of his stuff on online right now, and it's, like, really here's, nice. Here's one idea. What do you guys think of Barry Windsor Smith? Oh. Give me some like, example of what he's done, and I can... Uh, Weapon, Weapon X. X. Ah, gotcha. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he used and, to do the Conan books. Yeah, his Conan yep, stuff yep. was sweet. That's that's he's what makes a, me think he would do an awesome Hellboy. Right, oh. exactly. That's what I was thinking. Like, he, he's I was got looking at some the, of his Conan art, and it's very rooted in like fantasy and shit. And, and, and his yeah. writing, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And he's got the very big Cthulhu style horrors down because that's what you know they worshipped yeah. in Hi- Iboria. Right. Uh, that sort of leads into my pick, which I want like a Walt Simonson drawn. Oh my god! Yeah, like Walt yeah. Simonson, but it's like about the aliens in the Hellboy universe. So I want like that cosmic, so, like, cosmic fantasy. Thor. Yeah, I want his cosmic Thor, except cosmic Hellboy fantasy. It's That'd either like that or like him or like my boy CJ. Or Christian Ward, like, would love to see him do some space Hellboy shit. It's, yeah, it's gotta either be that or... No, it's probably gotta be that right now. Would kill for for space. Hell, Hellboy in space. Dude. Cosmic Hellboy. But it's, like, pretty much all, like, the dream quest from Unknown Cadath. It it would still be that, like, HP Lovecraft... Yeah. ...sort of weird oh, by, space fantasy. By the by, um, some of the stuff I was looking at was not, uh... was not Al- Alex Ross, it was Alex Maleev. Uh, mm. oh, yeah, which is still yeah. awesome, amazing. But, um, yeah. I was just, like, pointing out that, like, the, you know, what they were saying was Alex Ross was not Alex Ross. <laughs> <laughs> but still. And uh Fair. Ooh, Fair. there's a John Romita one. That look Yeah, the John Romita one looks sweet. One would yeah, it's a bad now, yeah. I got I one do a bunch of Punisher and Hellboy shit or not Hellboy but Daredevil shit. Alex Smelly or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He did a lot of no, he did I'm... a lot of um Daredevil, yeah. 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 I, I got one that's out there, but Evan, I think you might follow me on this. Uh-huh. Considering the level of detail he puts into uh, the mythology behind his work, I'd love to see see Neil Gaiman take a spin on Hellboy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like that, but like, I, if, if it's Neil Gaiman, then I want him doing like a story set in the... 1700s or something weird like that. I want him doing like a historical Hellboy piece. Where? Well, no, I'd like to see him do a modern one, considering things like American Gods and uh, Good Omens, where he's taken on these classical ideas in a modern setting. I think, oh, see, I want him taking yeah. on the classical ideas the way he would in a modern setting, but in like the Victorian era or something. I want him I would want him to write uh Sir Sir Edward Grey, the Witchfinder. Oh yeah, there you go. I could dig that too. Where we've got like Victorian gentlemen solving solving paranormal uh mysteries or whatever. Ah. Uh, that sounds fucking great. Shit, you guys have some good ideas. All I did was go Here's some of my favorite artists. I don't care what they're doing. Uh, I just want to see them do it. (laughs) Now, back to Starlin, though, dude. You know what I'd like to see him do? Yeah. Um, No, but but tell me, so I do know. (laughs) What was it, like Black Hammer, that other one he does? That Mignola does? Uh, Black... uh, He did Sledgehammer 44. Black Hammer, I think, is just on Dark Horse. Oh, really? Yeah, I could be wrong. I am. I, I see a lot out. of the same artists attached. I am. So I thought it was the Mignol verse thing. I gotta say something. I'm really shocked. Nobody here has mentioned Rob Liefeld. Um. Hey, hey, hey! Listen, <laughs> listen, we don't need Hellboy with dozens upon dozens of copious fucking pouches. Useless, dude. He has pouches. Okay. What are you talking about? Yeah, he, <laughs> he's right. a pouch. He's a pouched man. Yeah, he's right. pouched. Yeah. No, but I'm saying he would take and that. And plus, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's the perfect project for um for him. Hellboy doesn't have okay. feet. <laughs> it already works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Hellboy is already way out of proportion. Yeah. Like, how much more could he fuck it up? Yeah. Could, speaking of that shit, somebody actually went through the uh, Deadpool 2 trailer and pointed out all the scenes where you see Cable and they don't show him from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, Def- this movie is definitely inspired by Rob Liefeld. But, they, you know. <laughs> but no, no, I get that. Listen, I just don't want to get a scenario where fucking Hellboy's pouches have pouches. That's okay, all about, I'm saying. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to scale it back a little bit. Jim Lee. Yeah, yeah. 
I, you know, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Jim Lee. I think he's a fantastic artist, but I also think his art style is kind of led to, to the Rob Liefelds of the world. I would put more put that more on um, McFarland than I would Lee. Well, I'd say well because it was yeah, they came up maybe. around the same time, but I would say it was that was more McFarland leading that charge because yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did use copious um, lines all over the. I mean, like, and and you got to say in more in more recent times, like Lee's art has like you know shaped up a lot better. Yeah. Oh, it's hey. always been solid. I dug his X Men shit back in the day. I thought it was yeah. some of the mo- best, most polished art I'd ever seen. I I have no problem with Lee. I just felt like he was just like Joe Matarairo was kind of a uh, catalyst for you know late nineties oh, anime characters. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that shift to the you know and and I'll admit I've taken the half inspiration. Anime style. Yeah. yeah. And I've taken inspiration from the guy. I mean, if I mean you it's not bad. Angles, I, like, I, I remember his X-Men it. run. That was really... Um, Dude, you should look up some of his shit now. He's fantastic. Oh, no. I, I, this I, game I, looked I, like it was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Darksiders, they're both Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Great both Dark Darksiders style. games. There yeah. will be a third one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Evan. Right. Hey, Jason. Here's a natural fit that I really am not sure. Has Eric Powell ever done Hellboy? I have no idea. Let me check the internet. Now, you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh, yeah. The, the goon. The goon? Yeah. Dude, I was going to say, I was going to ask you, man, because I saw that goon ad. Is that something we're going to do in the future? Maybe. Yeah, because I, I... That's a yes, because I remember him uh, trying to source books, as it were. Yeah, okay. Uh, Powell, so it looks like Powell's done, like, Hellboy commissions, but he's never formally... Uh, it's, gotcha. See, that's, that's such a natural fit. Well, Mignola's drawn the, a cover for... Well, Mignola was involved in the uh, Hellboy and the Goon? Is that is this a thing? I believe that was the thing. The goon it? number seven has a Hellboy crossover. Hold on a minute. I happen to be sitting in front of that issue. I'm going to pull it off his shelf right now. I told you. Yeah, he had to source some. I wasn't that was lying. Fair. Hellboy is fucking fantastic. God, I yeah. Wish I could draw uh, you bad. said number seven? Yeah, I think so. Yes, it actually does have a Hellboy cover. And, yeah, and uh, I think it's got Mignola on writing credits. You know what I dig, man? I'm looking Framing at, sequence and cover. Looking That's at Powell's uh, Hellboy, and he draws Hellboy's nose very, you know, similarly to how I did. Or, I mean, I drew it similarly to him. He drew that shit first. But, like, um, yeah. I, I, it's got that gotta, nice little hook. Yeah, I gotta be more confident in my fucking art, man. Let that shit flow through me. Amazingly, anyway, Evan, <laughs> the first, like, four or five pages of the issue are done by uh, Mignola, and it looks really cool. And it sets mm-hmm. up the premise. Well, not even the premise. It sets up the issue. But then when it switches to to uh, the other art style, you get to see Hellboy. Done. It's by, or by Powell? Really? I'm going to have to read yeah. that. I'm going to have to read that one, then. Or just fucking art, dude. And try to fucking find it when I go to my my local comic shops next. Yeah. You get like uh, four or five keep going like six, seven, eight. Yeah, for the rest of the issue. Hellboy sitting around done by Powell. Just a, it's just nice. a team up? That's and, fun. And it, it makes me so fucking happy. Dude. That's a good fit. That one I just And made. then it shifts back to Mignola oh. at the end. That's yeah, yeah. No, I know. It. I uh, that that's a, a really good one, dude. A little. I'm sorry, like the I'm face just, is perfect. I'm, yeah, it, yeah. It's, I'm just poking it, around, and it's gorgeous shit. Like, am I right though? That art style is such a natural fit. Yeah. Yeah. No. Super angular, uh, but like pointing places. At the same time, you got Hellboy, who's a little less stocky than usual, but you still got a, like, as big a right arm as you. Yeah. You expect? Yeah, no, it's a it's a natural fit. Somehow somebody looks more goony than the goon, though. And I don't think that's that's something that should happen. It's a guest appearance. You can get away with that. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a one-off that, due to the framing structure, you could say is in, in continuity. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it looks like Powell also did um, some, at least the covers for some Hellboy animated stuff. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, I think Powell was the art director. No, no, I'm... I'm talking out of my ass. Who was the art director for the two Hellboy movies? I thought it was interesting that fucking Mike Mignola did the uh, character designs and shit for um, Atlantis. That Disney flick. That was a good flick. It was. It was excellent. He also did the uh, canonical uh, Mr. Freeze. Oh, Uh, yeah, that's right. The one yeah. from the animated series that yeah. like everyone steals from now, even in um, what was it? I want to say it was All Star. They still had a uh, Mr. Freeze that looks like that with the the head in the jar. And you know why that you know you want to know why that Mr. Freeze is so iconic? Tell me. Because the Mr. Freeze before that was just like a bumbling villain. Uh huh. There was no and backstory. That made him into a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, it was. He's like, I'm, I, I'm another ice guy. You know, that was pretty right. much it. It wasn't until like <laughs> that particular telling that he actually got a backstory. Well, it's like, how do you get lamer than fucking Snarf? Oh, that's not his name. <laughs> that's I mean, not his name. Snarf. Did you, just, did you just go to Thundercats? What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, <laughs> Snarf. Hey. Oh, what's his name? Yeah. That's, hey, that's me. Snarf. It's me. It's me making fun of, of Snarf. Yeah. Hey, Lino. <laughs> I'm Leonard Snart. <laughs> hey, the Flash. Yeah. You're going a little too fast. Hey, the Flash. Snarf, snarf. Snarf, snarf. snarf. The Flash. Yeah. Hey, the Flash. That's great. Right. <laughs> yeah, hey, the Flash. That always, you know, I, you know, quick aside, that always reminds me of my favorite line hey, from yo. the Thundercats was because the way it was hammed up was so funny to me. Yeah. Yeah, it was a fucking hilarious show. It was like, there was this one where they had this shit called warp gas, right? Uh-huh. And the gas, you know, and, and, yeah, pretty much. It would just make you like, uh, <laughs> it would basically, you know, bring out your, you know, your tendencies and make you mad all the time, right? Oh, and so, so my man threw the gas and Lionel literally says, and I'm going to try to do my best Lionel pressure. <clears throat> I'm sort of gas making me <laughs> angry <laughs> some sort of gas making me Bill angry Bill Shatner <laughs> yeah i mean he that literally is... stuttered it just like that <laughs> it's some hey, sort of hey. gas yeah. <laughs> what's up i just had a thought you might get behind uh. bprd done mm. by george perez Ooh, i got a better uh, one for you what's up I'm bprd done seizure. by george lucas what <laughs> oh god <laughs> EPRD episode one. <laughs> a random the, the reaction was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, we're going to string you up after the show. So Jason just look, pulled a look, Jerry if Lawler you can give me Hellboy done by, <laughs> If you can give me Hellboy done by Willow era, George Lucas, I'm totally down. Yeah. yeah. But like... It's going to no. be... Uh, it's going to be... Uh, um, Star Wars Christmas special, George Lucas. Nah, nah, it's so cocaine, be, Lucas. Yes, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be the, a prequel to the Hellboy stories we know, and it's gonna force all sorts of shit that doesn't make sense in, gonna, just to serve the the conclusions in the present stories. We're gonna go through the uh, times when uh, Rasputin was a little boy. Yeah, and C three PO, he built C three PO. Find out like he was supposed like um you know um he was supposed to be the. Uh, the chosen one to like bring about the uh, the reformation, but he ends up trying to bring about the end of the world. <laughs> no, no, you, know, you know, we're just going to stop right fucking yeah, <laughs> just right fucking yeah. Hey, Rasputin, you were supposed to no, bring balance to the world, not, not destroy it. <laughs> yet. Hey, hey, just, hey! No, Jason is a Russian <laughs> spy too. It's not just me. Hey, 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 guys, guys, guys! Seriously, seriously, yeah. seriously. It's not Rain Johnson. <laughs> uh, that's just sub- subverting expectations. So oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> just uh, just sort of seeing Hellboy just going around murdering innocents for no reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh, look at this sleeping child. Oh, I had a vision that he might one day become a, a bad guy. Let me kill him. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, he's he's crushing kittens. <laughs> Kylo Ren, my my innocent nephew. <laughs> so, <laughs> we alluded to it earlier in this episode. I think, considering we're getting to the point where we're just kind of foaming at the mouth and winding down, <laughs> Wayne, I, I I think it's time for you to uh, hype up our new project. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Oh, you meant okay. You want me to talk about this? I thought you when you say hype up, I just mean to go Hulk Hogan. No, no, no. Uh, cut the promo. No, no, cut no. the promo. You, ass cut the fucking. Dude. Ass fucking. Okay. Hulk, please. I mean, no, 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 H-H. no, no, dude. He does a fucking great Fred Sanford. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, if you want, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try some you big dummies. <laughs> We're gonna be doing a comic show. <laughs> Another one. That's a really good Red Fox, dude. Oh <laughs> yeah. uh, um, no, Wayne, Wayne's the king. It sounded like black people. <laughs> but tell us, brother, brother. Yeah. All right, dude. All right, dude, brother Jax. <laughs> you know the worst part, Daryl. This is the first time you've had me uh, reference our Twitter at the start of the show. Yeah. When this show airs, we're just going to get a bunch of fucking tweets saying, wait, Wayne isn't black? <laughs> hey, I can neither confirm nor deny that. I can actually <laughs> confirm that I am not black. <laughs> <laughs> I've Listen. seen a picture of Wayne. He is white. Yeah, yeah, and I, yeah same here. And I'm not will... talking just white. I'm talking about um, nearly almost Seamus white. Right. I, I am was fucking dude, powdered Wayne, donut white. Wayne, I will tell you, I, I, for the first year and a half, thought you were black, dude. And I was <laughs> shit. <laughs> and I was like, I better not piss this nigga off. <laughs> <laughs> Racist. <laughs> hey, I wear the badge proudly. No. All right. Nah. All right. Okay, so I had this idea, like, and the reason this idea had been in my head for a long time mm-hmm. is because we do this shit all the time anyway. And we're just like, you know, bullshitting around, talking and whatnot. Is essentially the idea of this new podcast that would be debuting in a few weeks <clears throat> is that we're going to take stories that were terrible, essentially, and show how with a few tweaks here and there and maybe a full, you know, whitewash of certain things and whatnot, they could have actually been good. And you can credit Daryl for the name of this. He's called it, uh, What'd you call it again? <laughs> altered, <laughs> altered vision. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's basically, you know, it's taking like what, you know, had originally come out. I mean, even if, yeah. even if it was for like even just a cash grab or whatever, because that was a lot of the. Yeah. yeah. Especially in the 90s, a lot of shit that came out was really. I mean, let's be honest with you. It was just cash grab shit. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, essentially, you know, we talk and you ask these ask these guys. We talk about this shit all the time when we're together. It's like, hey, but you know what would have been cool if they'd have done this instead of that? And they're like, yeah, <laughs> yes. So we're gonna. Hey, I I got a theme song for it too. Hey, yeah. dude, don't be so sad. We'll take a bad book and make it better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you need to just get a fucking pro to record that for you. Yeah, to, exactly. Uh, I'm going to go call Jim Johnson. and uh, <laughs> He needs to work. Apparently, my man is selling like all of his like old equipment and stuff. I'm oh, really shit. sad. Uh, I, I'd just be like, hey, Evan, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Evan can do. Yeah, I forgot Evan can do like stuff. Yeah, like you that. guys, you guys want me to play the the classical guitar version of fucking Hey Jude for you? Yeah, uh, let's I do it. You, actually, I want you to play Real American by Hulk Hogan. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Hulk Hogan, forgetting I'll do my that best. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's going to be some you know obvious changes to the format. It's going to yeah. be a little more of a closed cast. Mm-hmm. Whereas, also, the only thing, and like I said, this is one of those things you just had to have working. We we're going to have like a working knowledge of it, even though Jason is going to immerse himself in our first. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh so our we, first project. Should we, should we tell him what we're? Yeah, we're why do, not? Or, let's, okay, let's... the first project, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the Spider-Man Clone Saga. Right, because God. apparently, well, because apparently, even though we half-ass everything, we're we're committing to that for some reason. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> like I uh, Jason it, but... just pointed out to me that he's like, uh, f- you know, he's able to track down all of the issues of the Clone Saga. <laughs> oh no, no, the... there's a five volume set. Well, still, okay, we're down to that. God, five fucking but, volumes. But how many pages was it? 
It's going to be around 2,000 pages, all told. Now, and the fact is, this tells, you, this tells you how silly yes. they got with this. This is Christ, one of those, exactly. this was the example I was talking about when a lot of this shit was done for cash grab. Well, hold on a sec, Wayne. Remember what I told you earlier? Uh, I'm like, I only read book one. Yeah, that's what I'm getting ready to one, say. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, Jason has only read through book one, and he said they could have already tied this up and been moving on to something else. Right. And you know, it had a perfect, four more books. Yeah, it had a perfect tying off point, but still, it's but they didn't do that for some reason. So, how many issues were in these books? Do you remember by chance? Well, the thing is, it, it cuts out sections of the books that pertain to the Clone Saga, like backup stories and certain issues. Yeah, yeah. So, but so I know I, that ran for more than a year. Right. But put it this way, each no, so. book is around 400 and some odd pages. Yeah, and of course, right. these were running, this was at the time when you had the book, you know, you had Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Sensational Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man. So, spectacular. And a, and spectacular. So you had like a bunch of books that were just on this particular thing, and it ran for more than a year. Yeah. Now, Wayne, another answer to that question, how many issues does this story have? Well, just wait until our podcast and we'll point them out to you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Like I said, but the thing is, we're not going to go into the what it, you know the uh, right. the re, the scenarioing here because that's not necessary exactly. uh, but, but that's just a kind of giving a hint of what the what is to come yeah and this is like i said it is a separate thing it, it well it takes tie together but this is separate from greater point five because this is like a little bit different project like jason says a little more closed in i might be you know for certain things i might pull in somebody else you know once in a while because but, they might have expertise on one thing or another you know things like that it's, but the core cast is going to be me you and daryl right and you know i guess we can let like, evan come along if he wants to <laughs> yeah i probably won't know enough about most of the series that you're talking about but well it'll also up... no, no, see that's the thing working knowledge is really all you need you can go read the wikipedia about it and I, that's and, good and enough dude, for me yeah. <laughs> it's not like we're going to be recording that every week yeah, this is like yeah. a, maybe a once a month, maybe every couple of weeks thing. Like, yeah. Well, a, I'm down to come hang out every once in a while. And it'll right. give you a more working knowledge and more of a base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, those are comics. Re- Got you it. You can, you, yeah, we're going to be reading a lot of cape stuff. Yeah, when you go, okay. when you really realize what the CD underbelly of was, well, that was the 90s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh God, Jesus yeah. Christ. And a lot of our, I looked at it like the list that we made, and a lot of our stuff came from the 90s. There was a few yeah. things more recent times, but most of it is from the 90s. <laughs> so. Hey. I've done my best know, to avoid it, but I'll well, see what I can do. Yeah. You, I mean, if you if you want to do this, man, you're you're in for a fucking ride. Let me tell and, you, it, it'd work perfectly because uh, our big aim with Grade Point Five is to do non Marvel, mainstream Marvel and DC stuff. Right. Whereas this and, is we're going back in time to talk about those right. mainstream yeah. things, and what what you could say could let could have led to the ruination of what the industry is now. And, <laughs> and oh, yeah. Current, uh, well, dude. Yeah. The fucking the, the 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 clone saga actually stands as one of the most egregious fucking events of the nineties and shit. Oh yeah. It, it, I mean, like you said, there were several books in the Spider Man line and the thing ran for over a year. It was hands down one of the most kind of cynical, unnecessary, creatively bankrupt fucking events. And and I think, you know, shit like that. Uh, is what led us to this the event fatigue we're feeling now so you know mm. there's you know but that's not the shit we're going to be focused on um, we're just going to basically take the story and see if we can come up with something that, that might have worked a little better you know yeah so you know but, so there's that and yeah. look forward to that that's uh we'll be recording uh what did I say sometime after Wrestlemania if we- <laughs> put it this yeah. way um it will have been recorded by the time this airs yeah but it but may you've... not be up and running yet exactly but expect it soonish after that after you hear this yeah probably within like a week or two of this airing <laughs> and then uh that's and then Daryl that's when he will start doing his striptease podcast oh. with where, where well, it's an actual video podcast where he takes off all his clothes and talks about uh, yeah. oh, the world of I thought th- I thought that you meant like he would be like teasing comics that would be coming out. Yeah. 
No, no, no. That's no. a distant and future. That's actually that, a that's really a good fun idea. idea. And I think about it. Fuck, what have I done? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> this absolute uh, madman has come up with another idea. Uh, yeah, and, uh, also, and it would and definitely also, be called striptease because right. you're, yeah, it'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. And this, Guys, we gotta print this money. All because I wanted to see uh, Daryl naked. That's <laughs> oh, no, nobody wants to see Daryl naked. Not even Daryl. <laughs> and okay. I'm, and I'm realizing something. No, altered vision is not just an excuse to get rid of Dick. Aww. It totally is. Don't no, even look. Well, no, that was fair. That was what the chemical castration was for. Oh, to be oh, fair. Yeah. Going I mean, into this, I only thought it was going to be the three of us. Evan coming in is a last minute thing. And in your case, I was like, dude, you just got a job. You take all the fucking time off you're going to fucking right. need. Fair point. Get and your as, goddamn life together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and as, and as Evan was saying... Wait, wait, wait. I, I like this. I like this. It's like, you know, oh. this is just Jason. Like He pulls dick off to the side. Look here, you piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, get your oh, but, I mean, like together, I said, there's actually actually does like a couple of stories I would like to hear Dick's like take on because I think yeah, he's absolutely. a he's a smart lad and I think he would give a good you know point of view. But he doesn't have like I said, this is not a uh, every day every week thing. So yeah, uh, this is a literal jump in jump out. Like I'll put the list one day. You know when we start doing this, I'm gonna put the list up and it's like hey, you know. You yeah, got some input, actually, let me know, kind of thing. That's, you know? that's a damn good idea. And yeah. we that's definitely a um a fucking show we're gonna wanna take uh listener feedback on. Oh yeah. I mean you know, uh, our listeners might come up with something we never considered and shit. You know? He's like, so, Hey, take a go go do so and so. It's like oh <laughs> Right. I mean and uh, like I said, that just leads, right now we're just doing the bad stuff. I mean we could eventually do actually things that were actually good. You know? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and just talk about hypothetical, you know, mm-hmm. uh, alternate possibilities. I mean, stuff, I even, you know? Yeah. You, know, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, like, I always take the example, like, um, how, um, you know, Identity Crisis was a good story, but it led to a lot of shit. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's the one example, you know? So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but anyway... You know, that, I don't want to give too much more away because <laughs> we still yeah. got the yeah. And we can even go into unfinished books and shit, and, right? Uh, figure out a way to wrap them up, like Miracle Man was. Yeah, <laughs> how about Battle Chasers too? Was that ever finished? It's like the speaking game, of Joe, kind of. speaking yeah. of Joe Mad, let's uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, just because I got a fucking boner for that guy, a little man crush on him, doesn't mean. Wait, where was I going with that? Um, <laughs> you were about to say something incredibly gay. <laughs> no, no, that's everything I say. Why would I stop myself this time? <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other cool part is looking forward. It's like we've got three more episodes planned of Hellboy. And then we're going to take mm-hmm. a break, you know, uh, do some one off shit, goof off a bit. You know, Decide but, whether we want to finish Hellboy or not. Well, no, no, no. We're, we're going to put Hellboy aside for a while. Good. Yeah. yeah. Even though I, like, I, I, I actually I love this, I love this comic, but I, I need a break. I just reread this this last summer. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking about uh, rehashing some old territory. If you get my drift. Uh huh. I got you. Uh, well, I don't yeah. know what you mean. Let, let's see how good I'm Dick's, hoping. how good Dick's memory is. I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, so. Dick. Is that what we're starting with? Transmit? Really? No. Yeah. Oh. No. Name. How do you feel about rereading Battle Pope? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. That, I'm always down that, to read Battle Pope. Was that one of, those, w- that one of those last episodes that we're going back to the well to... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Battle Pope yeah. is amazing. Oh, my God. You guys are going to love it. Battle Pope is mean, absolutely The title... Amazing. Mm-hmm. The title is, uh... It's the title yeah, doesn't perfect. even Great, do it right? justice. No, we're gonna go back to the... To the well. Hit up some old stuff. Maybe, uh... How do we feel about Dick taking uh, the uh, lads here to the feel zone? Oh, <laughs> shit. Hey, I don't have any feelings. Actually, I do have the one, and that's just anger all the time. <laughs> M- make him re- read some Wii 3. Oh God! Yeah, that'll destroy any man's soul, even if you don't have one left. I don't. So we'll put that to the test. 
Yeah. All so right. See, do some fun little things like that. You know, get some stats up for the Hellboy shit. See what we think. Yeah. And eventually we'll do Transmetropolitan. Yeah. It's that... just going to be a matter of how we do it. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. I think it's it's maybe a good idea to just, like... You know, take some time. We'll all read it. We. This is one thing I think is good, that's going to require show notes, uh, in the in the sense that like, we need to condense it down to the the important story beats and shit. We don't that's, have to go over the minutia. I feel like I feel like Transmet would be more fun if we like. Yeah. Did that one, one you, episode we gotta get more autistic. or less? Yeah, I want to like be autistic about it. I want like oh, if yeah, we talk I, about story. Yeah. Let's talk about all the main story arcs in one episode and then fixate on some weird shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm, I'm well, kind of getting at. Like, Because my you know, favorite it's, stories it's in Transmet weren't the main story ones. They were right. all the weird little one-offs where he's, like, going around fucking up a religious convention. Yeah. Where, like... Yeah, where there's, like, a BDSM religion and there's, like, every sort of weird religion you can imagine. I want to see... I want to see yeah. Spider Jerusalem there. Right. And the, yeah, and that's like that. We would literally have to do one graphic novel per episode. Go over it with a fine tooth fucking comb. Oh, see, I'd want to do like a yeah. big picture thing where we right. like right. zoom in on weird, weird things that occur across. Well, that's the all thing. The so much weird shit comes across through there. In just mm. small, tiny little ways. Threads that you lose for 10, 15 issues that pop back up, you know? Oh, hey, I remember the people who, who live naturally in a reserve in the park. I wonder if they'll come back. <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and my only concern, I suppose, was just that there's a lot to unpack with Transmit, you know? And that is definitely something that, you know, either we go all in like that or we do break down the story beats. And I do agree though that it would be way more fun to, to get into the minutia if you guys are if you guys are willing to do that, I'm all in. You know? And see that's the thing. I am totally all there. No you're not. Oh <laughs> rip. You know what I mean though. Yeah. I am totally rips. down for it. Yeah, man. Okay. And what we need to know first is are the listeners down for it, you know? Right. So, and yeah, if you if you have anything to say about this, you've been listening to it now for, at this point, it'll have been eight fu- or seven fucking episodes. Hit us up on Twitter at uh, Graded Point Five. Just spell it out. And Let yeah, us know. I, dude, would you really want to see us go autistically all in on dude. Transmet? And not like just I, that. it wouldn't have to be like a whole bunch of episodes all at once. Even we could like we could yeah. sprinkle it. Right. We could sprinkle the autism. It but wouldn't have to be like all taken at once. Right. I do want to um, a- add an addendum to Jason's plug there. Um, you know, I do want some feedback on. You know, do you do you like it when we stick more to the books and and. You know, like tonight we were kind of loose. We didn't really go into the stories too, too much. You know, we we just kind of picked and chose what we were interested in and kind of moved on to the next thing. Do you do you like stuff like that where we're just talking about, you know, shit organically and having a good time? Or do you want that more rigid structure? You know, and any and all feedback is appreciated, you know? Smash that like button is what he's trying to say. He's trying to say... Yeah, smash that like button. He's trying to say smash that like button and like and subscribe. Turn on the bell for notifications. Leave a comment. And yeah. Yeah, all the stuff that YouTube stars tell you to do. Yeah, email me your uh, fucking social security number and credit card. Just hit us on Twitter. (laughs) We're going to ignore everything else. Hit us on Twitter and send nudes. Right. Ladies. Oh, shit. (laughs) <laughs> and I guess also the boys. Well, Jason's got to have something to look at. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, because I, I, I'm, I, I gotta admit, I'm kind of cool with this looser kind of feel where we just talk about the comic until we're kind of done with it. Because you know, I think you put enough out, you guys put enough out there where people can go, okay, maybe there's something interesting here, you know, and go check it out for their themselves. And ultimately, I think that's what I want people to do. 
if, mm-hmm. if we accomplish anything, it's hooking up people with comics they might not have been aware of, you know, and shit like that. Dude, we and, should be reading shit like Usagi Yojimbo then. God, oh, dude, yeah. Yes. Eventually we will be. Yeah. And so, you know, but I am really interested in hearing what the listeners have to say. Do they like it more casual? Because I'm digging it. Because it's weird. Like, I'm looking at the back end and all these stats, and there's nothing pointing to any one episode type standing out above yeah. any others. Exactly. That, And that's definitely why the key feedback is key, because, like guys aren't telling us it's really kind of hard for us to glean from the, the stats they don't give us any meaningful information to be uh, fair we, well, we all kind of suck at stats so that's true yeah. too but but i do think actually now that i'm thinking about it if they do say anything it's that generally the people who do listen on a regular basis seem to be pretty much cool with whatever we do because like we haven't seen any downshifts when we've switched to like a more casual Thing, or we're just shooting the shit, or you guys are clowning on me for eating cockroaches behind the Panda Express. Like, yeah, well, I mean, you know. Well, I was gonna say one one of the most pop most popular recent episodes, the one where we spent the entire time shitting on a really really shitty Superman comic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, yeah, okay. So, but the thing but, is that yeah. what separates something from being the top ten to not being in the top ten is literally at points like a handful of views. Sweet. Right. Well, then that sounds like just keep keep on the keep on the straight course. Keep fucking them up every week. Yeah. Yeah, dude. We need hey, maybe we need to start every show with a flub. You know, just fuck it up right out the top. Wait. Actually now that I'm saying that I realize we we did we did that this show. We do that every show. Yeah, yeah. We get it all out of the way. We get it all out of the way right at the start. I, I don't think that's accurate, man. I think we keep fucking up through the entire fucking Daryl, thing. Daryl, quit undermining me. I'm telling oh, the audience the truth. Dude, I'm a contrarian. <laughs> Just yeah. for the sake of it. I'm yeah, an and I'm skeptic. the manipulative villain behind, the, <laughs> behind all of the other panels. You don't see me. But I'm trying to manipulate you and the audience to think that to, that we know what we're doing. Hey, okay. hey, 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 yeah. little joker, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Hard as shit. <laughs> Riddle be yeah. this. What's an hour and a half long? Like and- <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I just had this realization. Like, I, I just made like, you know, is the Joker and the Riddler having an argument and just Triple H busts in? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, you pieces of crap. <laughs> Oh, shut the fuck up. I'm the cerebral <laughs> assassin around here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tries to hit hit the Joker with a with a big fucking No, I was gonna say with the big sledgehammer. Oh yeah. And uh it turns out it's like a fake one, the fucking head falls flies off when he swings, and then Joker hits him with a croquet mallet, and it's like, pretty perfect. <laughs> Alright, one last note In before we go. Hey Daryl. Yeah, man. You were mentioning uh, Mike Allard earlier. I, I what? Oh yeah, Mike Elrod. Yeah. It, How would you feel about redoing iZombie? Yeah, I say so. That was part of that era, right? The, the yeah. lost tapes. And the shit. lost tapes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I think on that note, we are good to go here, and uh, yeah. yeah. Again, go to us, follow us on Twitter. Yeah, follow us, man. Follow us on Twitter. Smash that like button. Comment and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, and the Twitter has a, a link to our Discord on it. You can come and bug us in real time. Yeah, seriously, berate us in real time. Yeah, we don't we we don't get enough of that shit, man. We are masochists through and through. So come fucking shit on us, but figuratively, not literally, okay? Because I and, and let's listen. Uh, let's listen to seven K's, and he wants you to literally shit on him. <laughs> You into scat, man? It's not. It's not really my thing. I mean, that's what you yeah. say. But you know, I've I, I, I've actually seen your online orders, and okay, I, 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 dude, I'm, I'll try anything I'm, once. I'm just gonna stop recording for this gets any worse. <laughs> hey, this is Jason. This is here to say, if you enjoyed the show, spread it around on social media. And follow our social media presences on Facebook and Twitter, both at Graded Point Five. Just spell the whole thing out. Also, support your local comic shop and the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. If you don't know where your local comic shop is, there are sites like uh, findacomicshop.com and that'll help you find it. 
Well, we hope you enjoyed the show, and we'll catch you next time.